not talking about your health. We're talking about your bat. How good does that feel? Feels really good. Feels really good. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really happy with the amount I've been able to play, the bats I've been able to get. And just being back out, being able to compete and play in front of these fans, it's, it's been great. Well, it's been, really, it's been really fun watching. You know, I, I, I try to explain to people that 2010, you know, you, you came in what, June? May? Yeah, late May. Yeah. Last year, you know, you lose most of the season. So this is really your first full year, you know, grinding it out, playing every day. And I'm wondering if, if you can can feel an off day coming. I mean, when you do a lot of catching, if you can you know, say, look, you know what, I, I, I can feel one coming. And then do you talk to the manager about that? Uh, you know what, uh, Boach and I, I think, have communicated great this year. And um, the main thing that's, that's been important from day one is just uh, staying fresh enough to remain productive on the field, you know, and, and being able to go out and give everything I've got every day, and I think it's worked out well. Yeah, right. Oh, you're coming up upon a very important birthday in your family. The twins are going to be one year old. What are you going to do for the birthday? Oh, man. <laughs> be pretty low-key. Got some family coming out. One MVP. Uh, nothing too crazy. Are you going to give them the birthday cake with the one candle on it and say, have at it? Yeah, they're gonna get after it. We'll have, to, uh, we'll have some good pictures. Hopefully, it'll be all in their hair and stuff. <laughs> I want to ask Ryan Terrio if you, when you played the Giants against the Giants last year, was there? Did you have a feeling about? You know, I, I think that would be a good bunch to play with, or didn't you like him at all? <laughs> I'm setting it on a tee for you, baby. No, I hated every one of them. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> You know, you have a certain respect for, for the players, and you know, obviously you see the way they play the game and then the success that they've had on the field. Um, during a season, you don't go into it looking for a place to uh, to play the following year, but, uh, you know, when the opportunity came up and, and uh, there were some teams to choose from, obviously San Fran was at the top of my list. Um, and, and, and the main reason, so I don't have to face uh, Maddie and Barry. And, you know, I mean, that's... That's not a fun, uh, fun staff to have to come in here and face. Ow! Well, you played in great organizations. You played in Chicago. You played in St. Louis. You played in Los Angeles, and now you're in San Francisco. How are these fans different than the other fans? You know, you don't really get a true appreciation of it just coming in once, uh, once a season, which is what I did. Um, but from a day-to-day -day basis, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a Tuesday. Uh, game or, or whatever. This place is packed. It's rowdy. Um, you know, and, and what an edge it gives us as players. You know, and, and uh, you know, we, we definitely appreciate it. And, and we feel the intensity, honestly. I mean, that's true. I'm not just saying that, but, but as players, you can feel it. I mean, you know when the crowd gets going and, and starts pumping. I mean, that's... Uh, we feed off of that, and, and it's very important. And also, you know, as a visitor, you know, it kind of discourages you a bit. Ryan Vogelson. <laughs> the absolute model of consistency this year. And consistency is the hardest thing in this sport. This is a sport built on failure, and to be able to do what you have done this year, consistently go out there every time, every game this year, he has taken the ball into at least the seventh inning, and 80% of his starts have gone into the eighth inning. In a year after your breakout year last year, how important has this year been for you? Uh, huge. Um, you know, it's no secret, you know, in the off season and spring training, I, I made it very vocal that I didn't want to be a one hit wonder and have to deal with the media calling me a fluke for the whole season. So, uh, I mean, this, this is big for me. Um, it, it definitely took a little weight off my shoulders right away and just let me focus on throwing the ball and these guys, Terry Owen, the guys we got playing defense have been absolutely wonderful for me. And I mean, I, I'm not pitching the way I am without those guys behind me because they, they seem to make a lot of plays for me when I'm on the mound.
So there has to be a trust between a pitcher and his defense. Absolutely, and I mean, I, I've kind of taken the concept of in the last month of throw the ball over the plate and go ahead and hit it because I got a good feeling that one of our guys is going to catch it. Yeah. Very good. Woo! Right, uh, see if we can get a little bit more personal with each guy. <laughs> and uh, woohoo! <laughs> I want to ask each guy who their favorite player was when they were a kid and why. And I'll start with Z. Favorite player as a kid. Uh, I grew up in San Diego, so uh, my favorite player was Tony Gwynn, and uh, he was, you know, he was consistent, like you were talking about. And uh, they would always talk about, no matter what kind of accolades he had, uh, batting titles, he was always the first guy to show up, hitting off the tee. Um, I went down there in 01 in interleague, and unfortunately he was on the DL, so I, I had one opportunity to face him and then didn't. But uh, you know, it was it was pretty special watching him play. So. You met him. Have you met him? Uh, yeah, I used to be like 10 years old at baseball camps growing up and, you know, shaking his hand. And so now I see him, I'm still starstruck. We just, uh, Boach and him were hanging out in the weight room in uh, San Diego and I was still like, you know, wide-eyed. And that's the way it should be. Buster? Yeah. Uh, growing up in Georgia, watched the Braves a lot. So uh, it was a good time for pitchers. Yeah, I actually liked a lot of the pitchers. Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz. Uh, watched Chipper a lot, which was kind of cool because I got to play with him in the All-Star game this year. So, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good time to be a Braves fan yeah, as a kid. It really was. The Riot, favorite player and why? I had a couple. Um, I love Cal Ripken Jr. And, uh, and then Ozzie Smith because he did flips whenever he ran out to the field. Did you ever try to do one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've seen workouts. Recently. <laughs> Hunter, favorite player growing up as a kid? Well, growing up in Arlington, uh, I got to see a lot of no-hitters from the man Nolan Ryan. Yeah. And you've met him, I'm sure? I've met him. I got to got to meet him, actually. He owned my double-A team, so it was like, kinda, I was, he was my boss, too. There you go. Skip, as a kid, who'd you like? Dwayne Kuyper. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. The game. I saw that home run he did. I'll never and, and what team was I on for that? Do you remember that? Uh, Cleveland. Oh, there you go. You're not going to get off that easy. Seriously, you had to. I know you moved around, military kid. Yeah, I did, and uh, I was a, a little bit of a Yankees fan and Reds fan, so I really had to come. No, I know I'm not now. No. <laughs> You can't hold that against me, but uh, growing up, I was a huge uh, Mickey Mantle fan. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, Mantle and you know, I played power switch hitter and all that. And then when I started catching in high school, I, I was a big Johnny Bench fan. And, uh, he was the best. Ogie, you know you're going to get a, a big roar if you say Mike Kruko. You know that, right? I was thinking about that. <laughs> no, uh, being a, I was an infielder. Uh, until college, I didn't pitch till college, so being a shortstop, I was a huge Cal Ripken Jr. fan, too. Yeah, and you just, just the fact that he played every day. Well, I was, where I grew up over on, in, by Philly, I was actually kind of closer to Baltimore, so um, I was a Phillies fan, but Cal Ripken Jr. was my guy. And uh, I got a chance to meet him last year at the All-Star Game for the first time, and uh, one of the special moments of being at the All-Star Game was meeting him. It was, it was really cool. Yeah. I will go back the other way. The question this time is going to be, who was your first big league at bat against, and what'd you do? Bogey. Uh, right here in uh, AT&T Park. Actually, it was probably Pac Bell then. Uh, in 2000, 18 inning game against the D-backs. Um, I let off the top, bottom of the 18th, Miguel Batista. I hit one right off the top of that Yahoo sign. Yes, <laughs> first at bat. Boach. First at bat, what'd you do? First at bat was July 19th, uh, 1978, was off Craig Swan with the Mets. And uh, we got a line drive to right field. We're two for two already. Hunter. I might have to let y'all down. I struck out. <laughs> David, David Bush. It's uh, like a 12 pitch at bat, though. Yeah. I battled. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, he has a curveball. I, I think it was like a fastball away I took. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Ryan Terrio, first at bat, what'd you do? Well, Dusty was my manager in Chicago. No. No. He called me off the bench in the 10th inning to pinch bunt. Oh, come on. In my first major league at bat. Probably the worst situation you could ask for for your first big league at bat. And obviously, I did not get it done and struck out. It was off of some clown named Shackelford. And, um... Anyway, thanks, Dusty. <laughs> Mine was 2009, September, pinch hit in the ninth. Hiroki Kuroda, CG. Thanks, Boach. <laughs> Struck out. <laughs> C. Uh, I think mine was in interleague in 2001, and um, we were playing the Diamondbacks, who won it all that year. And I was facing Schilling, and uh, and uh, I had hit Luis Gonzalez in the hand his first at bat, and he was their big guy that year. And so the first pitch was 95 right at my chin. And I couldn't believe that uh, those rules applied to you know, the pitchers. <laughs> but apparently with Schilling it did. So uh, my highlight of my of my year was spitting on the 2-2 split down, and then I struck out, but regardless. Regardless, I spit on the split, so. <laughs> the split. Well, for the pitchers, we should find out, do you remember the first hitter you faced? Um, let's see, uh, I made my debut against the, uh, the Angels in 2000, and um, I think Darren Erstadt was leading off for them. Yeah. yeah, and he was a stud that year, so yeah. Right. Bogey? Yeah, it's, uh, here against the Cubs. September 2nd, 2000, Joe Girardi hit a line drive. Almost took me my knee off. Got 101 coming back at me. It's a rough league. It's a rough league. It is a rough league. All right, tattoos are part of the, our culture, and it's uh, you see them every day in the uh, clubhouses. So the question for you guys is, what's the most entertaining tattoo you've seen on a teammate? Go first. <laughs> See? Um, there was a guy named Justin Miller who pitched with us actually a few years yeah. ago. And uh, everyone knows in the league, uh, Justin Miller had about a literally probably 60, 70 tattoos. And there was a tattoo that Billy Koch uh, dared him to get. And I think he paid him like $1,000. And he got I Love Billy Koch on his rear end. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Didn't he have a big L-A on the back of his back as yeah, well? Yeah, he had a, because he was from L-A, he had it like right there, Old yeah. English, I mean, just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I love Billy Koch, I do now, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Buster, you got one? Uh, let's see. Carl, our strength coach, has a baseball with fire coming out of it, which I think is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> No offense if anybody has that out there. Or, or if you're out there, Carl. I'm not worried about Carl. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan. And I'm with Buster. Any like any like the generic tattoos I think are pretty stupid, but um, I, I mean nothing really jumps out at me. Sorry guys. Yeah. So, Hunter. I got I got two of them. They're kind of kind of simple. One's from uh, I played in college. You guys know Tat Man, don't you, Ryan Roberts? Yeah. He got only God can judge me across his stomach, <laughs> and our coach put on the board, Ryan, I can judge you. <laughs> the other one was a high school teammate. He ran around. He thought he was so cool. He was like, I bet you I got your name tattooed on my ass. I was like, No, you don't. He's like, No, I got your name tattooed on my ass. Five dollars. It's like, All right. And he had literally the words, your name, your name. tattooed on his ass. <laughs> I lost five bucks. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> your name? <laughs> That's the best. Yeah, that's what he did. <laughs> he got a lot of free beer with that one, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Skip? I mean, do you even notice? No, I don't. I have, I have my own office, so I'm not <laughs> checking the guys out like they can check each other out. I think he has 
transformers on all over anybody. Yeah. I'd have to go there. Yeah, yeah man, I, I've seen a lot of dumb ones. Nothing's really coming out. Um, well, they should mean something, right? Yeah, I can't remember the guy's name. I played with him maybe for like three days somewhere, but he had Calvin and Hobbes throwing a baseball, and I was like, that's a pretty tough tattoo you got there. Uh, you have to be good to do that, don't you? Yes. I mean, and it was real tiny, too. I'm like, what's the point of that? <laughs> oh, this is our group. They're awesome. <laughs> You know, it's really funny, I'm standing here, and while these guys are talking, and uh, and Buster will remember this, Skip will, Z will, Ian Kinsler, right here. Yeah. And it bounced back. Yeah, that was off of Matt Kane. Yeah, very good. Where is he? Matt Kane is celebrating a win tonight. You know, look, we have a great rivalry with the Dodgers, and uh, and I'm wondering if before you come to the Giants, if you know that or you realize that once you're here, or if you just it's common knowledge. Z Dodgers Giants. I mean, you you got it right. You knew it was a rivalry. You know, we did. I mean, it, it's funny because uh, everybody talks about the East Coast baseball, obviously, and, and every chance I get, I talk about how you know our fans here are very East Coast oriented. You know, with their passion for baseball, you just don't see this kind of stuff on the West Coast. Um, so it got voted number one, and I think that really showed a lot of people. I think it was a year or two ago. Uh, Boston New York rivalry was second, and I think that was a huge statement for all of us. Yeah. Well, it didn't take long. Um, I don't think I knew the uh, the magnitude of it until I actually played in it. And, uh, you crazy people are out there trying to beat LA at like five in the morning. No, it's great. I mean, this is that's why we like to play the game, and uh, I mean, it, it doesn't get any better. You know, Ryan, you've seen other good rivalries. Cubs and Cardinals is a great rivalry, but uh, you've had a chance now to experience this one. This is a good one too. I didn't realize the intensity of it, you know, until um, until I played on the West Coast. But uh, the, the only thing I can I can liken it to would be would be uh, Cubs White Sox, and the reason being is because the whole game you're looking out in the stands and there's people fighting and there's stuff getting thrown on the field and the game stopped. The only difference is when you go to LA, they throw those stupid beach balls on the field. It's, but those two rivalries are very similar. I mean, I think the intensity from a fan standpoint is second to none um, with L.A. and San Fran, no doubt about it. Hunter Pence. Uh, I haven't really partaken in the party yet, so I'm waiting to see. You'll enjoy it. It's fun. I'm looking forward to it. Coach, is it a little different managing in a rival game as a skipper? Oh. Uh, that, without question, I mean, you feel it. Uh, the players feel it uh, as soon as you walk in the ballpark, and uh, and there's so much uh, 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 discussed about the uh, two clubs. And I'm I'm a little bit older, so I go go back to Marichal and, and Roseboro. So, oh, yeah. I mean, this, uh, so much history between the two clubs. I will notice, though, so when, when Ryan mentioned he played on the West Coast, he didn't want to say who he played for when he was in Charlotte. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's long-standing. It's, it's, it's so much more uh, uh, fun, I think, when you have uh, something like this going on. Foggy, your first experience in the rivalry? Actually, mine was, it was in Dodger Stadium. Um, you know, obviously, you get drafted by the Giants, and you hear about it, and, uh, we well, go to Dodger Stadium the first time, and I'm sitting in a bullpen, and people are screaming at us, and I'm like, man, this is this is intense. And about two innings later, I look over, and I just see blue and orange and black in a melee, and I'm like, all right, now I get it. Well, Ryan Terrio, you you do something that's really quite unique. I mean, you played for the Cubs. You played for the Cardinals, you played for the Dodgers, you played for the Giants. And I don't know anybody else who's played on both sides of the fence for those two rivalries. 
You are correct. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I only had one choice, though. My, the only choice I had was to play for the Giants. Everything else was where I had. That's where I was tagged. Yeah. We're glad you're here. Hey, look, we've got a microphone here. Mario Eliotto with the Giants. Anybody here close has a question, and, you know, we want you to give it a little thought before you raise your hand. And it's, Okay, this is going to be good. The first one's always the best one. I, that's a lot to live up to. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm just wondering what your pre-game meals usually consist of. Bogey. Bogey. Somebody said bogey. Uh, I eat, the night before I pitch, I eat chicken enchiladas. Every time, it doesn't matter where we're at. I missed it one time last year, my second start in New York. I didn't make it out of the fourth inning. That's the last time I've ever not had chicken enchiladas. I search it out too, boy. When we get into a city, I Google it, I'm on it. So you have to have an opinion while you're eating them. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Absolutely, absolutely. Right now, number one, Cincinnati sleeper. Really? Sleeper chicken enchiladas in Cincinnati. Wow. See, that's good to know. Yeah. Skip, of course, you're in the office by yourself. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> See, anything? Pre-game meal? No, I mean, I try not to... You know, I, if, I just don't want to panic. Like, if Vogie can't find the chicken enchilada, which, you know, I may not be able to find it, so I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to panic. So I try not to, I try to break those, you know, those superstitions a lot. Has that ever happened to you, Vogie, where you can't find chicken enchilada? I mean, Costco's got them. You can bring them frozen, you know. It, it hasn't happened yet. But um, I, I worry about that sometimes. I worry about that sometimes. But it's funny because all the guys on the team know it now, so about the third inning, they'll come up, hey, bro, how was your chicken enchilada tonight? <laughs> Perfect. Well, don't ask Z to help you find chicken enchiladas. If you uh, I, I will say this, though. You know, uh, a, a friend of Barry's came in a couple of years ago by the name of Joe Day, and he cooks for these guys, and uh, he's pretty sensational. And, I mean, I, I guess you'll make just about anything you want. But overall, you know, the meals we had when we played, you don't even want to know about those. But things are good in there, right? Buster, good food? Yeah, really. Uh-oh, here we go. Yeah. Really good. Um, you really don't have an opportunity to eat, eat poorly. Um, he just, uh, he knows what he's doing, and it's really good, too. I mean, it's just tough to beat. So, Buster, what's your favorite pregame meal? You know what? Whatever Joe fixes, I'll I'll usually eat that. But I just I usually stay pretty light. I try to try to eat a good meal four or five hours before the game, and then a little bit more a couple hours before. But I don't want a, a full stomach going into the game. Ryan. Well, um, I had a meal I ate before every game. My, my pretty much my whole life and it was two grilled cheese sandwiches and I dumped syrup all on top of them and I would drink a glass of milk with it and then I hit 30 and I started to gain a little weight and then I started to gain more weight and so it got pretty ugly so now I just I'll just do like a little sandwich or something but the grilled cheese with syrup if anybody hadn't had it, it's probably I mean what a treat what kind of cheese? It doesn't matter. It gets you ready to play, though. I mean, it really gets you ready. Don't eat it before you go to sleep. Put your pants. Uh, I'm pretty uh, simple. The same thing everywhere. You never, I never have the problem uh, Vogi has. They have peanut butter and honey on whole wheat bread. It's got hits in it. Mario. Buster Bash player. <laughs> yeah, you know, Buster's got this Buster Bash home run game that a lot of the players are playing. Buster, do you know who's the best at it? And you can eliminate yourself because I'm sure you're the best. But after you, who's next? Uh, well, Vogie stinks. I've seen him. <laughs> Kane's pretty good. Kane's been all over it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, it was funny. We in in St. Louis, there was every, there was four or five guys were playing. All the writers are playing. So uh, so it's a hit. Where's Mario? I can't find him. Right there. Come on, Mario. You got one job. <laughs> Oh, I just want to say I love you all. In my first year of season ticket holder, it already paid off, and I really, really look forward to the rest of the season in uh, October. Uh, how did you pick your numbers? Yeah, your yeah that, that, you know what? Your questions are better than ours. <laughs> We're not into that. Z, did you get to pick yours, or did somebody hand you your number? Number 75. Um, <laughs> I was number 34 actually coming up. There was a guy Mogi actually played with named uh, Chris Benson, and he was my idol um, all through high school and college. So I took 34 because of him. And uh, when I got to Oakland, Raleigh Fingers had it retired. And uh, it's a weird it's a weird way to pick a number, but I just thought kind of like symmetrically what looked best with my four letters of my name on top of it. And uh, it was either 57 or 75. And I figured 75 gave me a better chance of keeping my number when I went to a different team. And it worked out. Veteran move. Buster. No, uh, this one just found me. I had this uh, my first spring and it's stuck, and I like it. All right, nice and small. I generally take the smallest number possible, <laughs> and um, it has nothing to do with my size. I swear. <laughs> but if you t if you put double digits on the back, you know, with two numbers, it kind of dominates the back of my jersey. <laughs> Hunter Pence. Well, uh, this is my my third team, my third number, but. Uh, Growing up, actually, this is the first time I got to be the number that I always was as a kid. When I was little, uh, I kind of liked Ozzie Smith, too, and I played shortstop, and I used to do a backflip. So uh, I was like, you can read the number right side up and upside down. It worked out. <laughs> Bruce Bochy, numbers. Um, my first number was 13 when I came up, and if you ever looked at the numbers on the back of my baseball card, you'll know why it changed. I'm superstitious. <laughs> they weren't very good, so I got traded uh, to New York, and I, I switched over to 15, and that changed my luck. Bogey? Uh, first time here, I was number 14. Uh, we traded for Andres Galarraga. Um, Murph came up to me and said, the big cat wants 14. Will you give it to him? I said, absolutely. I'll make sure you get a watch. Perfect. I got sent down that day. I wore number 32 for one day. I got sent down after the game. I never got my watch. But then I signed back here, and uh, I went in the first day, and Murph said, I put your, your old 32 back in your locker. And I, I couldn't believe he remembered that. Andres Galarraga forgets so. Question right here. Yes, I'd like to know uh, what other sports you played in high school or college. Well, you started out. Other sports you played? Uh, we didn't have football at my high school, so I played soccer and basketball. Soccer and basketball. Boach? I played uh, basketball up until uh, I got to high school. I, I, my father was in a service, so we traveled uh, all the time. And, and by the time I moved down to uh, Melbourne, Florida High School, the sports had started, and I just started concentrating on baseball. <laughs> just baseball in high school. Just baseball. Baseball and basketball. 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 Basketball for a couple of years. Yeah, just baseball. Just baseball, Z? Yeah, all right. Where's Mario? Right here. Over here, we have a question. Straight ahead, Kate. Move back farther. Oh, stand up, Mario. For <laughs> Um, I was wondering, what is your favorite place to play other than AT&T? Okay. Z? Uh, you know what's funny is I really love Anaheim Stadium. And uh, I, I don't know, there's the rocks out there and they got like the waterfalls and all, you know. It's just, it's a beautiful stadium. I was really excited to play there this year. Well, let's add on to that and say, what about City? Oh, city-wise, uh, for me, Chicago, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, Buster, park, and city. Uh, I'd say Chicago also. Um, just 
the history of Wrigley. Um, it's a fun place to play. What about hitting? You like getting there too? Great place to hit. Yeah. <laughs> right now. That's why Terrio had a few homers there. Yeah. <laughs> Under the bus. I know he's right. I did have a few homers there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Milwaukee is my favorite place to play. Uh, the ball just looks big there for some reason, or it could have something to do with the fact that the bullpen wasn't that good when I was playing there. Um, City-wise, I'm going to keep the theme going and say Chicago. Yep. I'm going to have to agree with, with Terrio, Milwaukee. The ball just flies there. They have RBI baseball arcade game in the clubhouse. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, Donkey Kong. Awesome uh, brats. They got the brat race, and last year one of, our, one of our guys almost got ran over by a wiener. That was fun. Um, the city, San Diego, uh, just because they have awesome breakfast spot within walking distance. There you go. Name? Roger Walker's Pancake House. There you go. Uh, Folks, did you know that? No, I did not. Oh, so you need to talk to Hunter about where to go in San Diego. I forgot the question. What was it? Uh, I don't know what city. I, oh, yeah, I'm uh, uh, Chicago, too. I love day games. I love having the evenings to go out and get a nice meal. Did you have a favorite park as a player to play in? Uh, yeah, I, I'd say uh, Chicago there, too. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a nice hitter's park. It is, and we'll be there in what? A month or so. Yeah. Bogey? Anywhere but Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> Both city and stadium. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's Mario. What, uh, what is the best teammate prank you've ever seen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it usually requires... A little thought. This is always a hard one when people ask me. Do you, you guys, any come to mind? Okay. Well, just the uh, the one on Showtime last year with Huffy's credit card. That was that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. And he bit too. All right, Mario. Next one. What kind of after uh, game drink do you drink? Uh, after game. Beverage. Drinks. Terrio? Yeah, we we drink water and Powerade after games to hydrate <laughs> because it's because when we when we play out here, you know, we get dehydrated, so it's just a lot of water, maybe some IVs here and there, and then Powerade to get the electrolytes back in. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I forgot to mention, I forgot to mention muscle armor. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Mario. Hey, guys, you, uh, you told us what your favorite player was when you were growing up. Who's your favorite player to play with, not on your current team? Wow. Favorite teammate you ever played with, not on the Giants? Uh, I, think, I think it's Andres Torres. Are we talking, I mean, from a performance standpoint, Barry Bonds was unbelievable. I mean, the things I got to see that man do on a baseball field were unbelievable. And being 23 years old and not really seeing that quality of player until that point, I mean, the first three days I was here, I'm in, I was in awe. Of, I, was, I couldn't believe what the man was doing just three days I'd been here. But to get to see him do it was, that was something special. Coach? I'll pass. I, I have too many. <laughs> Hunter Pitts. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones, but um, I got I got I got two quick stories. I'll try to make it quick. Darren Ersted got to play with him in Houston. The man was the most intense individual I've ever seen. I actually like put on display at my house a helmet that he destroyed in the back room. <laughs> he destroyed it that bad. I was like, I have to like show this off. He was awesome. Um, and then Ty Wigginton, uh, he was, I played with him in Houston and in Philly. 
and he was leading off in Houston at one point, and he calls himself the fat kid, and he's got like a huge bell, and he's just funny, and he goes, I was like a rookie at the time, he goes, hey Hunter, I'm leading off, man, I'm going to bunt, and then I'm going to hit a home run, and he's like, I want you to go home and tell this is how you, this is how you lead off in the big leagues, and he takes like a stack of 10 Oreos and just crushes them. <laughs> they work. Brian Terrio, teammate. Uh, Mark DeRosa. Slash Kerry Wood. Probably hero. Good ones. See? Uh, Tim Hudson. Uh, it's with Atlanta now. Good ones. Mario, where'd you go? Where's Waldo? <laughs> What's your best memory as a baseball player? Your best memory as a baseball player, Boach? Well, that's that's a real easy one. Uh, when Wilson threw that last pitch yeah. in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. Bogey, what do you got? Uh, Mother's Day here last year. Yeah. Uh, my first start as a giant in this stadium. I walk off the field to a standing ovation after being out of the game for five years. Yeah. Unbelievable. Thank you so much for that. Best memory in the game. Um, we'll say today we won today. Buster Posey went deep. That was awesome. Coming over to San Fran. Every win. Those are good ones. Ryan Terrio. I mean, I'm be honest. Winning the World Series last year was uh, was the best for me, for sure. Nothing like it. Buster. Yeah. World World Series. Z. You know, the World Series for me was bittersweet. Uh, so obviously it was it was quite a rush, but I, I plan on contributing this year. So right. hopefully yeah. 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 How about a nice round of applause for Ryan Bolasai, Bruce Bochy, Hunter Pence, Ryan Terrio, Buster Posey, and Barry Zito. Thank you, fellas. told this enough, but for two guys that go back to candlestick days, yeah. we were that close to Tampa Bay. And then this ball team got a chance to stay here in the city. We always dreamed about a, a ballpark. Nobody ever dreamt it could be this good. And it was the season ticket holders that built it. And for all of us in the Giants organization, we want to say thank you for everything that you have done for this great franchise, because without you, it's not a great franchise. Good night.